Hi friends, I welcome you to today's session on 5 MCQs on securities market and this is a series which we are continuing for a while now in which we are regularly discussing important questions with regard to securities market for upcoming SEBI grade A 2018 examination. And for this particular video, our topic is company law on the securities market. So we are going to discuss in Q&A format the different matters which are contained in the company's law which deal with the securities market. So friends, we have been working in this direction of guiding students for competitive examinations for the past few years and we have been blessed with some of the very amazing results. In RBA grade B 2017, 27 of our students, they made it to the final list. And in NABAD grade A 2018, 20 of our students, they were selected in the final list. And RBI grade AB 2018, the final result is still awaited, but again, we are positive on this front also. Now, before directly jumping onto the questions, let me quickly tell you about the courses which we are presently running for SEBI grade A 2018. So we are offering these courses. You can avail the course for security market phase one and phase two. Or you can also choose the phase one mock test along with this securities market course and there is this full course for phase one and phase two of the SEBI grade A. So you can choose as per your requirement and also you can avail attractive discounts by using the codes given below. Now in order to channelize your preparation in a better way and in order to prepare you for all the related competitive examinations in one go, we are also providing some combo courses for SEBI, RBI and NABAD. So you can choose the combo courses also if you are preparing for all these examinations. Again, you can avail discounts by using the discount codes mentioned here. So let's start with the first question. As per the provisions of Companies Act 2013, a private company may issue securities by way of rights issue or bonus issue through private placement to public through prospectors. And we are given different permutations and combinations of the same 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 2 only, 1 only or none of the above. So we have to find out by which of the following means the private companies they can issue the securities. Now before moving on to what are the different ways by which the private companies can issue securities, let me quickly talk about the difference between the private and the public companies. Now the public companies, they are the popular ones which you and I they hear of often in the news. But the private companies, they are the ones which would have been set up by some of your relatives or maybe by you. So these are smaller companies and they are not the bigger ones. They are the companies which are just having a few members and they have a limited set of objective, limited set of area of operation in general but the public company they are having a very wide area of operation they are having large number of members and they are the companies which you and I would easily recognize by just looking at the name of that particular company so there are different characteristics which define these two companies that is private and public company now you can easily identify which one is a private and public because when you read the name of the company you would find that in the name of a private company in the end it would be written private limited but in the case of a public company it would be only written limited so in the private company if we talk about the transfer of shares it is restricted so in a private company the shares can be transferred only to a set of few persons they cannot be freely transferred in the public so you cannot uh, trade in the securities of the pri uh, private company in the market also but in the case of a public company you are you are free to deal with the securities in the manner you feel like and there is no restriction with regard to minimum paid up capital now this restriction earlier it was there uh, that private companies must have a 1 lakh paid up capital and uh, similarly for public companies but now this restriction it has been eliminated so no minimum public uh, minimum paid up capital is required to be kept by these companies now as far the as far as number of members are concerned now in private company there has to be a certain limit on the number of members which can be there now minimum members for a private company is 2 and maximum member is 200 but in the case of a public company minimum members they are 7 and there is no limit for any maximum member 
and in the case of a private company there is less restrictions which are required to be complied with because the interest of public is not in general at stake for these companies so they have to comply with a lesser number of regulations so there is less statutory cost but in the case of a public company because they involve the interest of the general public at large the statutory cost is a bit higher now if you talk about the provisions of the companies act 2013 with regard to issue of securities now the section 23 deals with the same and the subsection 1 of this section 23 says that a public company may issue securities so these are the different ways by which a public company can issue securities so they include to public through prospectus so it means a public offer so a public company can come up with a public offer in which the securities can be offered to the public another is through private placement so in this case uh, a private placement can be used and this concept we have already discussed many a times in which the shares they are not offered to the public at last but to certain set of specified persons uh, and also there can be a rights issue or a bonus issue so in a rights issue the persons who are already holding the shares of the company they are given the right that they can buy more shares and in the case of a bonus issue the persons who are already holding the shares they are given additional shares uh, free of cost so this is a bonus issue and in the case of a private company there is only two sets of modes which are available one is by way of rights issue or bonus issue and another one is through private placement so they cannot issue such securities to public through the issue of prospectus so these are the only two ways through which they can issue the securities so now we can easily answer this question that as per the provisions of companies act 2013 a private company may issue securities by either private placement or a rice issue or bonus issue so the answer is going to be option number a that is 1 and 2 Now let's move to the next question. As per the provisions of Companies Act 2013, a prospectus contains certain statutory information, and under this information, a statement is also required to be made to the effect that nothing in this prospectus is contrary to the provisions of which of the following laws. So, it what this statement has to be made that nothing in this prospectus is contrary to these laws. So, what are the laws which are covered here? options are companies act 2013 itself securities contract regulation act 1956 securities and exchange board of india 1992 so this question is asking that the statement which is to be made in prospectus that this prospectus is not in contrary to the provisions of different sets of laws so which set of laws are being talked about in this particular uh, statement Now, if you talk about the matters to be included in prospectus, now I believe you are already aware of this term prospectus. So, whenever a company comes up with the issue of securities, this is prospectus which is required to be issued by the company, and it it contains different sets of information about the company, the general information about the company, the corporate office, the directors, etc., the financial information about the profits and the losses and the balance sheets, etc., and certain statutory information is also required to be made. so the matters to be stated in prospectus are divided into three categories one is general info second is financial info and the third one is statutory info now under the statutory info a prospectus shall make a declaration what declaration has to be made a declaration has to be made that this prospectus is in compliance with the provisions of this act this means companies act so prospectus has to comply with the provisions of the companies act and it has to be stated in this statutory information and a statement to the effect that nothing contained in this prospectus is contrary to the provisions of this act again companies act securities contract regulation act 1956 securities and exchange board of india act 1992 and the rules and regulations made there under so it is very clear to us that now this scope of the laws covered here is very wide and is not restricted to just the companies act alone so here the prospectus shall state that it does not contain any statement which is contrary to either the companies law or the scra law or the sebi law so this is what we have to remember so now we can easily answer this question that all of these laws they are required to be covered in the declaration so the answer is going to be option number d that is all of the above 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एज पर द प्रोविजन ऑफ कंपनी एक्ट टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन certain provisions of the act are to be administered by securities and exchange board of india that is sebi select the correct combination in this respect statements are such provisions are relate to issue and transfer of securities only such provisions they relate to issue and transfer of securities and non payment of dividend administration powers are available for listed companies only administration powers are available for listed companies and for those companies which intend to get their securities listed so this question is asking about the powers which have been conferred upon sebi under the provisions of companies act 2013 so it is asking one the matters with with which uh, in which respect the sebi has the power and second the companies with which uh, in whose respect the sebi has the power so it says whether the matters they are restricted to just transfer of securities or they cover non payment of dividend as well and whether the companies they are just listed companies or they will also include the companies which intend to get their securities listed so we have to make out a right combination of these four combinations or statements which are given so let's take a look at the sebi powers under the companies act 2013 now as per the provisions in the companies act 2013 uh, which deal with the sh share capital and debentures and with the punishment for failure to distribute dividends they shall in so far as they relate to so it says that the provisions which are there in this companies law which deal with share capital and the debentures and with punishment for failure to distribute dividends so if if it deals with the shares debentures and for non payment of dividend in so far as it relates to these two matters so if the provisions they relate to these two matters that is issue and transfer of securities and non repayment of dividend so if these two are the matters and this is in respect of listed companies or those companies which intend to get their securities listed on a recognized stock exchange in india except as provided under this act be administered by the securities and exchange board by making regulations in this behalf so the, these are the matters that is issue and transfer of securities and non payment of dividend and in this respect the administration is to be done by sebi and in any other case the provisions shall be administered by the central government so now we can easily answer this question that we have to take a very wide view out of these powers of administration with sebi and the correct option is going to be which covers both the cases that is securities and dividend and which covers both the companies that is listed and those intending to list so answer is going to be option number d that is 2 and 4 next question as per the provisions of the companies act a prospectus shall not include a statement purporting to be made by an expert unless the expert is a person who is not and has not been engaged or interested in the formation or promotion or management of the company so expert should not be related to the company expert has given his written consent to the issue of prospectus expert has not withdrawn such consent before the delivery of a copy of the prospectus to the registrar and a statement to this effect shall be included in the prospectus so this question is asking about when a statement can be included by an expert in the prospectus so when can expert opinion expert statement can be included in prospectus now when we talk about the inclusion of expert statement in prospectus then the provisions which are relevant here they are a prospectus issued as per the provisions of the companies act shall not include a statement purporting to be made by an expert so the general rule is no expert statement is to be there unless now it can be there if 
The expert is a person who is not or has not been engaged or interested in the formation or promotion of the management of the company. So expert should not be related to the management of the company. So if, if expert is a, a chartered accountant or any certified financial planner, then he, should, he or she should not be related to the company. He or she should not be engaged with the company in any kind of manner if he is making an opinion or statement on the this prospectus. If the expert has given his written consent to the issue of security, so this is also important, a written consent. And this written consent is not to be withdrawn before the delivery of a copy to the registrar. And a statement has also be to be included that this request has not been withdrawn by the expert. So you can take the expert's statement, but it can only be taken only in case of certain specified cases. So now we can easily answer this question that as per the provisions of Companies Act, a prospectus shall not include a statement purporting to be made by an expert unless the person is not related. Uh, the person has given written consent which has not been withdrawn before delivering copy of prospectus to registrar. So the correct answer is going to be option number D that is 1, 2 and 3 all are correct. Now next question. As per the provision of Companies Act 2013, no prospectus shall be issued by the company unless on or before the dates of its publication, its signed copy has been delivered to the registrar for registration. So if you have to issue prospectus, first of all, you should deliver this prospectus to registrar of companies. Within how many days from the said delivery, that is delivery to registrar, the prospectus is to be issued by the company. Options are, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days or none of the above. So if you talk about the delivery of prospectus to registrar and subsequent issue of securities, then no prospectus shall be issued by or on behalf of the company or in relation to the company. So no prospectus is to be issued unless on or before the date of its publication there has been delivered to the registrar. So first of all we have to deliver this uh, uh, copy to the registrar of companies for registration. A copy thereof signed by every person who is named therein as a director or proposed director or by his duly authorized attorney. So this prospectus has to be first filed with the registrar of companies and this uh, filing has to be a copy which is to be certified or signed by all the directors or would be directors of the company. And with regard to the time period of issuance of prospectus, the company's law states that no prospectus shall be valid if it is issued more than 90 days, more than 90 days after the date on which a copy thereof is delivered to the registrar. So after you have delivered the copy, you have 90 days to issue the prospectus and if you do not use this 90 days judicial, judiciously, then you cannot come up with this issue of prospectus. So now we can easily answer this question that the prospectus is to be issued within 90 days of the delivery to the registrar. So the answer is going to be option number C here. So friends, this was all about our discussion on some of the very important MCQs pertaining to the securities market. And if you have any query or you wish to know more about our courses, you can visit our website which is www.edutap.co.in or you can drop us a mail at hello at edutap.co.in or you can call us at 8146207241. So friends, if you found this video useful, please like the same, share it with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you wish to get regular updates on Telegram, you can subscribe to our Telegram channel, the link of which is given here as well as in the description to this particular video. And subscribing to our Telegram channel is also going to help you fetch the PDFs of all the discussions which we are doing on YouTube. So thank you friends.